Welcome back. So let's make a new class. Let's make some kind of employee manager that can create, delete, update, do stuff with my uh, employees. So we're going to, um, again, we're doing this very basic right now. I might have pulled this into another project or a new package, stuff like that, if I really want to do this the right way. But this is just to show you. So I create a new class and this time we're going to just call it employee manager. Uh, we could also call it fake employee database, whatever you want. I just, I'm just doing something here. Uh, I also would have had a facade and stuff like that. We'll get back to all of that later. We'll make this employee manager into a public guy and we will um, we'll need a few things for him. First, we'll need a way for us to create an employee. That was kind of the goal of, uh, of the first function in here. When I start the application, it said, what do you want to do? Well, I want to create an employee. Right? Um, I could just have written the employee code right here now, like you did, like making a new employee and saving it somewhere. But again, you need to be aware that you don't end up putting way too much code inside a single class. We want to split things up. That's the idea behind the object-oriented language of C Sharp. We want to split things up so they're easy to reuse, easy to read. Uh, so don't start just writing code in here and, and be a madman. Just start splitting things up. And that's why I'm making the employee manager. Good. Let's make the create employee thingy magoo. So we'll say public because this is allowed outside and we'll make it a void because we're not going to get anything back in this case. And we'll make the function called create employee. There we go. And what do we need to create an employee? Well, I think the easy thing to do is to start up by making an employee down here. And impulse, just call him that, new employee. And then we'll just start trying to figure out what an employee can actually get. There we go. We'll do it like we did in the on other lessons. So what do we do? Well, we have a name. Okay, so let's add a name. And that name needs to come from somewhere. And in my case, I'm going to send it as soon as I create the employee. I'm going to add a name here, right? So I'll even default the name into nothing. So look at this. This is a very neat thing. I can say like this, and it'll mean if you do not send me a name, I'll just put an empty one. And actually, I'll put an unknown here. So if this guy is not sent, automatically the name will be unknown. Hope that makes sense. I know that's a bit advanced, but I want you guys to know as much as possible. What else could I put in an employee? Uh, let's look. I could put in a department. And uh, again, let's make, uh, I lowercase the ones I send in. And I uppercase the ones that are properties inside the employee. So the department, I'll put it in here. Department equals, and again, let's put in a default value. Uh, I don't have to, but I want to, because I want you to be able to create an employee and put nothing in there at all. So the department will be unknown as well. Maybe this is back practice in some cases, but who cares? In my case, this is good practice. This is what I want. What else do we have? An email. Mm, yeah, let's take that. That's the last one. Uh, email. So let's add the email here. There we go. I'll save everything. Now, I get an error. So let's mouse over here. See what it says. Operation, optional parameters must appear after all required. So that means that I'm not allowed to put in something that's not optional in the end. I have to put it up here instead, right? So it is actually required like this. Uh, so the email is required. The others one are free to use if you want to. And let's um, let's just add the last ones as well. At least uh, one of them, the salary level. Oh, by the way, also notice that there's no calculated salary level because that cannot be set from the outside. Uh, let's just add the salary level as well, and let's just uh, copy this guy. We're almost done here creating this function, and uh, I'll just send that in again as, as one. So you can see that it's also possible to send in numbers. Oh, that should be an end here, and there we go. So now I can actually choose to either send in nothing in these three values, but I have to at least send an email when I create an employee. Good. So that was what we had to do to... Um, to the new employee manager, now we need to use him. So I'll generate a new employee manager here in the beginning of my, my main. Employee manager. Now, employee manager. Now you could just, you don't have to, this is not, this is not something you have to do. I could just have write the code directly down here, right? I could just put the list in here somewhere or the array and then write the code directly down. There's no rules there, right? Uh, but, but I choose to do this because I do not want this to be overpopulated with information. Okay, so right now I could, it looks a lot simpler when I do stuff like this. Employee manager, create employee, and then I just need to fill in the information that I need. Um, 
right? It, it's just simpler to read. And now what I need to do is say read line, uh, console read line. I just do it a very simple way because I don't want this video to be too long. We will uh, modify it next time. So what it means is that um, I wanted to write a line here before we do this, where it's a console the write line um, type email like this. We go. So now it can actually run and we'll create an employee. Now it won't do anything with the employee yet. He's just created. So let's just console log him and uh, then we can see that he's actually created. Console dot write line and then I'll, I'll just print the employee, the new guy that we wrote. And let's just run this and see what happens. Um, next time we'll refactor it and add even more. This time I just want to show you the manager and how you could use these default values inside a function if you wanted to. And I'll write one to create an employee. It'll ask, type his email. Okay, Lars at ost.dk. There we go. Enter. It'll pop up with everything unknown, but I'll get an email. So unknown name, salary level one, salary 700. Um, right? So, so all of this pops up automatically for me and it's now been printed. Now we need to save it somewhere. We'll do that in the next lesson. See you next time.